Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming Podcast. Hi, I'm Lucy James, and I listen to the One Up Gaming Podcast. Hi, my name is Justin. I'm the developer of Pur Rocket, an iOS space game with cats. And I listen to the One Up Gaming Podcast. You can find a link to download my game at facebook.com slash purrocket. Yeah. It's how we do it, y'all. L-G-E. My straight out of Ghana, stop it, guys. What up to you, One Up Gaming? One up gaming is behind me. Let me get in beast mode. If you wanna try me, you don't need a cheap code. Kante is who I be to you. It's Mr. Hero, legendary adversary. Flows considered lethal. I'm a super saiyan. I got dragon balls. I wouldn't lie. You might think I'm playing when I'm saying I can really fly. When I'm on the track, you feel the energy I'm pushing. I put me on the map. One up game is who I'm talking about. I'm the rapping master chief. Epic to say the least Contain the hero better Etch that in your memory And so the one up gaming for the show I'll contain the hero is really gonna show up And we're back. It's One Up Gaming, episode 229. It's me, David. It's Eddie. And we've got Brian. Hi, guys. What's up, man? Glad to be back for another week. This is going to be fun. Oh, yeah, this is so fun. (laughs) Well... I don't know, since the new guy's here, um, since I don't know him that well and everything, do you want to go first and talk a little bit about the games you've played? Eddie, do you want to go you're first and see, see what you've been playing? Oh, don't worry. I know how this works. Uh, let's see. I've been playing Overwatch because competitive has been weird. I don't understand how Overwatch's competitive ladder even fucking works anymore. I don't know how it works, so I'm not going to fucking try and understand it. I've been playing some Forsaken, Destiny 2 Forsaken. It is... Disappointing isn't the word. It's lackluster. They're really trying to just pretend that they are. They have a lot of content by just spilling it out slowly for some reason. Don't understand why. And recently been playing Ghost Recon because suck it Wildlands was on sale so I just grabbed it and it is fun it's not the best game I've played but it's fun which is more than I can say for a lot of games but that's all I've been playing just these three games right that's not bad that's quick to the point I love it I love it so Brian do you want to go next (laughs) ah so um, pretty much, I was playing Doom recently, and I thought Doom was a hell of a good game, you know, for a, an old game, and I saw the movie recently, and that movie was kick-ass, you know, I, I, I liked the Doom series, and I saw Doom Eternal's coming out next year, um, but new games that I've actually been playing that are out recently, I'll start off with one of the less-rated games that I've been playing, which is, uh... Steel Empire. I just got that today and started reviewing that. And if you've ever played Sega Genesis and you remember the arcade style games, that's the old side scroll shooters, you'll love this game. I mean, A I love like this game. A bit like R-Type and that sort of stuff. Thunder Force. Yeah, and this, this game's fun because you can actually play it with your Xbox controller, Xbox One controller plugged into the PC. So you got... Uh, 
X button to shoot behind you, you get a B button to shoot in front of you, and then you get this awesome attack, this is a thunder attack that you have to charge, but it blows up everything on the screen, power-ups pick up. It's a short little campaign, you can tell by the map, but the story mode plays out like a documentary, and it can be annoying when you first load up the game because you hear this annoying noise that sounds like one of those old rolling cameras from back in the 40s and 50s, you know? So I was playing that. That game was pretty awesome. Then I, uh, I'm trying to remember the game I was playing for Switch. Oh, I tried playing The Escapist on Xbox. Game's pretty fun. I want to try the Switch copy because it seems interesting. It's one of those old school retro RPGs going on. And the game that I really love that I've been playing more than anything lately has been The Conjuring House. And, ooh, let's talk about that. October's right around the season. It's like Halloween season's right around. And, you know, October 31st, Halloween. And usually my tradition every year, and I'm sure it's a lot of tradition for everybody, is to watch Halloween haunted movies, you know, stuff like that, and play scary games. Well, Conjuring House is not the game for the faint of heart. It might not live up to its expectations of the warning they give when you first load the game up that it can mess with your mind and whatnot and, you know, you shouldn't play this game alone. Because I'll tell you, I haven't seen much scary stuff except for this one demon lady that is constantly pursuing you. And the closer you get and the closer you get and the closer you get, the more she pops up. So if you ever played Alien Isolation, (laughs) you know the AI with the alien. Ah... This is just as hard. She constantly stalks you. And it's kind of realistic because in order for you to prevent yourself from actually getting caught by her, you have to find a save room and you have to shut the door behind you in order for all the seals in the door to work. And she goes away. And I'm already about seven hours into this game. And I thought because, hey, it's an indie game, it's going to be short. This game is not short at all. It just launched today on Steam. I heard it's launching on PS4 as well. But this game has jump scares. And some of the stuff I've seen scared the shit out of me at least once because I didn't expect it to come. You know, like maybe just jump scare startled scariness. But the level of story in this game you find as you go through the game, it obviously takes place in England. And originally, you know... I heard rumors that this was tied to the Conjuring universe in some way. And it somewhat is because some of the past of this house, apparently this from investigating and researching, this house is an actual real place over in England somewhere. And the storyline's pretty simple. Uh, if you boot the game up, I advise people when they watch this, you know, when they try to play this game, please sit at the main menu and watch the main menu because you're going to see some scary shit. And just sit there for a while. But then when you load the game up when it first starts, don't put any button because the story and the cutscenes tell what's going on before you even enter the game. So I learned that the hard way the other day. I was like, wait, what's this stuff? And I started watching it. So that's pretty much been my recent games. But I'm still playing World of Warcraft, which I love with a passion. Um... Just been pretty much jumping around from game to game. And I played an old ge- another old game, too. Asterisk War, which is a great game on Vita for any fans of the Asterisk War anime series. That's pretty much my games. Is that it? That's it. You'll right. have more for me when I pick up my games later this week. Can I get two more games and pick it up? That's cool. So... I've taken a couple of the PlayStation VR games for review. And the first one is a game called Neon Wall. And it's a very simple side scrolling 2D puzzle game. Where it's all colour coordinated, so the ball itself rolls. And if you are the same colour as the platform that you're on, you roll faster. So you have to keep switching the colour of the ball to the same colour of the background. And in later levels, there is also, you've got to keep doing that, and there's obstacles of certain colours. So you have two separate hands, and 
you can change the colour of the ball with one and shoot with the other uh, of the obstacles and it's trying to see what, what's happening, what's coming a ahead and also trying to keep an eye on where you are to keep the colour of the ball the same colour. It's good but oh my god after about level 5 or 6 it gets bloody hard. And I must say um, I'm actually colour blind so that it makes it even harder for me. Um, but it's not too bad. Um, I'd recommend the game. I think it's only about seven, ten pound. I can't remember now. Um, but it was only fairly cheap, so I would recommend that. It's a good little game. Um, the 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 VR actually works quite well because you can actually see right through the whole levels as if you're looking side on on a two D sort of drawing. It looks really quite interesting how they've done it. It looks nice. It looks like um, like Tron. It all very simple graphics, all neon colours and really nice. And then the next game is a game called Vroom Kaboom, which is a tower defence game where you drive the cars. So you have to set the cars going on the the path and try and collect all the bombs and mines on the way. And then hit their towers and blow their towers up while trying to just defend your tower. I did not like this game at all. It was quite bad. Um, the VR mode added nothing to it at all. Absolutely nothing. Um, I'm sure they said that there was an update recently where it added a first person mode. So I might give it another go and have a look in the first person mode. But the game itself, as it was, it was very sluggish, very hard to control, weren't quite sure what the hell I was doing half the time. It looked very like a Steam Early Access game, where things weren't quite finished and then you'd get like a pop-up on the middle of the screen. Not a nice neat box and writing, it was just like a white text that just sort of pops up saying, oh you need to do this, this, this. As if the developer thought, oh shit, we haven't explained that, we better put this in just to so people know. And it just wasn't good. I think that was only about six quid, so it's not great. Um, I think it's a fairly indie team that's made it. Um, but yeah, I would not recommend that game at all. The next few games, there was Formula 1 2018 again. A again, another... I would say it's Codemaster's best ever Formula 1 game that they've made so far. And they've made some good ones. So it feels good, it looks good. It's got enough content, enough like where you have to add bits to your car, do all the engineering. It's really good fun. And then I played a classic, which is Another World, the 30th anniversary of that game where you can have either the original graphics or you can get them like updated and it looks quite nice um, still plays really good I, I really enjoyed the game um, I had a quick go at Mega Man 11 and I don't know why they've called it Mega Man 11 because it's at least the 9 and 10 kept the, uh, the graphics and everything as if it was still made on the, the NES um, but this one, it's all like 2.5D cartoonified graphics and it just looks wrong. Um, I didn't quite like how it played, so I turned that off pretty quick. I had a quick go at the new FIFA game. And I must say, the, the new game is a lot better than last year's game. It seems a lot snappier with the pass and the shooting seems a lot more precise. Um, but I can't really go much more into that because of embargoes and all that kind of stuff. And next up, um, there was the VR Worlds. I've bought it years ago, um, but I never actually played it. So I'll just give it a quick go. I had a quick go in the shark tank where you're in the underwater looking around in the shark attacks you, which it looked all right, weren't amazing. And then I had a quick go at the VR, is it the luge? Where you're laying down on like the skateboard going down the track. And that kind of made me feel a bit queasy. But that's what the VR headset does for the PlayStation. It's such low quality and it's just rubbish. But 
it's fun in for five minute doses. So that's all I've been eh. playing this week. So, then question then, because I've heard you're playing all the VR games. Um, I keep hearing mixed reviews about the VR because I was thinking about picking one up eventually, but a lot of people are saying you could get motion sickness for it if you've never had motion sickness before in your life. Is that... Um, when I was in a meeting, I got told off a professional that the motion sickness... A lot of people say, oh, the more you play it, the more you get your sea legs and get used to it. It's a load of bollocks. Basically... The way the human body and head works is when you're moving your head, your eyes see that you're moving and your inner ear, it knows that you're moving with the, the, it's got like fluid in your inner ear. And as long as those two things are synced up, your mind works because that's how the human body works. But with the VR headset, You've got a headset on where you're watching all this amazing stuff moving around and everything. But your inner ear is like, I'm not moving. There's something wrong. So you're getting mix- mixed signals. And that's what gives you the motion sickness feeling. Because it's like, so much wrong, so much wrong. It's, it's basically, it's as if your body's been poisoned. It's trying to stop you doing what you're doing because so much not working in, in your, your body. So it's a natural reaction. I mean... Even, like, even in, the, like, the 1950s, there was people who were amazing at everything, and then they went to do fighter pilot training, and it just pushed their body to beyond what they were capable of, and they didn't pass, like, the training. Certain people are born where they have a, a much more tolerance than others. I mean, I, I used to get car sick just driving off the bloody drive. But, yeah, to me, it's, certain games are fine. And the other problem is, I get a lot of, like, my eyes hurt. Because the screens are that low resolution. You're trying to look at stuff and it's all blurry to hell. And it's just not great. And I don't think the VR is going to take off. I really don't. It's very expensive for very cheap. Well, that's what I've heard. That's how I was... Asking yeah. because my friend who used to work for GameStop was telling me because I was going to get one, but he's like, he's like, no, he's like, he's like, I've never had motion sickness before in my life, and he's like, after I did it, I felt like you know I was going to literally end up in a hospital because yeah. he said I couldn't just do it, and there's no way to test the VR anymore because GameStop doesn't have the kiosks, and I know Xbox had said no on the VR, and Nintendo had said no on the VR because they didn't think it would take off, so I'm assuming. I don't know, because I don't know if it's, is this PlayStation Technology VR the same, or is it different than the Oculus Rift and stuff that's VR? So it's completely different. The PlayStation VR is a budget version. The Oculus Rift is twice the resolution. It's got sensors forwards and back, so it actually has full 3D tracking, so it knows where you are in a 3D space, like Connect. But the PlayStation VR is really crap quality um, screens in the in the glasses. Um, how PlayStation tried to say is they've got like a 1080p display in the in the, for the lenses for the glasses. Um, but what they don't say is it's one panel that goes both eyes. So because you're watching one screen each, you have to half that. So it's it's half resolution. Whereas the Oculus and the the other one, the Vive, they use two separate lenses, so it's twice the resolution. But yeah, okay, well then I guess I won't be biting on that. Then I'll have to save up and get a and Oculus because eventually because it uses the PlayStation Move controllers, which is technology for about eight years old, and it uses the PlayStation camera which isn't the best resolution to, to follow your movement and that. So it's not the greatest. But I love Sony, but... Fun. 
I love Sony, but there, some of their decisions just aren't the greatest. PlayStation VR, hearing that disappointing news, which hearing it from somebody who's actually tried it, and then hearing recently the other disappointing news that they refused to do open servers across all platforms because they say Sony gamers are happy with where they are. Yeah, I'm happy with where I'm at with certain things, but, I mean, they're already talking in rumors, like I said we talked about last week. PS5, I mean... Rumors it's going to be a handheld like the Switch, which is great, because I love that, but... I don't, Sony's think, dropped, I don't think it will. They've dropped the bomb multiple times. They've had the PSP, marketing failed. They've had the PS Vita, marketing failed. They've only had, like, they have the new console that just got announced, which might fail. It might appeal not to everybody, but it might appeal to some, which is the new PlayStation Classic, their take on what Nintendo's been doing for a while. Um... It's like Sony's trying, but eventually, I don't know, Sony's big talking about once again doing cloud-based gaming, the next console being cloud-based. I'm like, no console discs, but I don't know. The we'll problem have to see. is, with Sony, I don't think the public would be happy to having like an Android-based handheld console that you can plug into the TV like the Switch no we already had that and I think it was uh, I forgot uh, Steam tried that oh no uh, shoot uh, that's, that's what the Nintendo Switch is just an Android based console it just uses the same technology as the Nvidia Shield tablet yeah, and that's why they had that lawsuit against them for so long. And I don't know how, I don't know the news on that lawsuit. I haven't followed it, but there was a lawsuit. Somebody said that they stole the ideas for their side controllers. But, yeah, um, sometimes makes you scratch your head about the future of video gaming because I'm still upset that most video gaming games are going no longer couch co-op and are going online only multiplayer. Fallout 76, anyone? Not me. Oh, well. So... Ah, oh, it's been a good 20 minute section. I like to keep things 20 minutes at a time. So we'll have a quick break and then we'll come back with the news. So back in a couple of seconds. Do you have trouble sleeping? Tossing and turning all night. Nothing you do seems to help. You're not getting your recommended 6 to 8 hours of sleep each night. Well, now there's a solution. Now there's Fat Cat Fly. With Fat Cat Fly, you'll easily get the sleep that you deserve. Download for free on the iOS App Store, and you're guaranteed to get a good night's sleep with very few side effects, as you help a fluffy kitty eat all the junk food that he wants. Side effects may include sleeplessness and desire for cheeseburgers. If erection lasts more than five hours, see a physician. Try Fat Cat Fly today. Visit facebook.com slash fatcatfly, because you deserve a better life. Hi. Justin the Voice here. First of all, we'd like to thank you for listening. Seriously. We really like it when you listen. Yes. But if you'd like to do more than just listen, if you'd like to help us out, well, we have an idea just for you. Visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. Your monthly micropayment will help us keep going. All night long, baby. Oh, yeah. Mostly because we usually record at night. Yeah. But don't worry, baby. We got something for you, too. We've got special benefits for all of our Patreon subscribers. Yeah. Again, that's www.patreon.com slash O-U-G. And now, it's this week's news! With one up gaming! Right then, so one up gaming. Still episode 229, still me, still Eddie, still Brian. And we're gonna do the news. So, I know what Eddie's thoughts are, but I will say, in 2012, I think it was. The Telltale series, The Walking Dead, was my game of the year. And I, I will say, I believe 
ever since that first series, I think Telltale's not updated the engine, not changed anything around, the writing got a lot worse, the acting got a lot worse, the engine, because it was ported over to new consoles and new systems, didn't work very well, it stuttered, it crashed a lot, there was loading errors, there was dele- deleting save files, there's loads of problems with it, and I believe that they have now announced that, well, I think last week they said that they've gone down from, was it like 200 workers, down to 25, and now it seems to have come out that they're filing for bankruptcy, so it looks as though they are now leaving the games industry. Which will be a sad sort of thing. But, I don't know about you guys, but I believe the problem is, because I, I used to talk to the people over, um, like, doing interviews and whatnot, and a lot of them were basically saying that the licenses that they had, um, their original IPs, didn't sell. So they had to pay for licenses of other like The Walking Dead, like Fables, um, Minecraft, all these other licenses, but they had to pay a lot of money to get those licenses. And then, each game, they normally gave the first episode for free, and then it was like $5 per episode after that. And I think they said that, on average, they only ever sold one and a half episodes after the first season, after the first episode, so the people, we- they would only be making five or you know basically like eight eight dollars per thing sold instead of like the twenty or thirty dollars that they wanted. So I just think that the episodic route that they went down sounded good. But I think if they just released the whole season in one go and everyone had to buy the one season, they'd still be around now because they'd have sold everything in one go instead of people just buying what they wanted and then got bored. Now, see, the, the, my idea is that now I'm seeing it from the other perspective. Yes, I've been a passionate Telltale gamer. Um, because some of my favorite series. But then let's let's face it, since we're talking about actual... Series, licensed series, Walking Dead, they had the Batman series, the Guardians of the Galaxy, having to pay for those IPs. Well, let's talk Walking Dead for a minute. Walking Dead Season 1, it was riveting. It was heart-wrenching, and it was sad. I mean, but, seeing you know the that. ending, <laughs> it, to me it was. Having to kill Lee or let Lee suffer, that I'll was... Just, i just shot him in the head, no problem. But but the thing is, the thing is, you think about it, the Walking Dead TV series, you know, we're talking about episodic gaming now, and episodic gaming is kind of one of my favorite series is going to be trying this, which is kind of sad and shocking to say the least, but Walking Dead, the TV show, got old really quickly. After so many seasons, it got old really quickly, you know, it just... No longer grabs me anymore, and it really just shocks me that they tried this concept. And you're right; they should release it all in one setting so you can sit there and play it. But the problem is, is they tried too hard to copy off of television. They tried too hard to copy off a of television where it's one episode, and then you got to wait. How long was it? A month for an episode, rather than every week. I mean, I'd be cool if an episode came out every week and you buy they it said it, or all in go but for a month but there was sometimes where it's three or four months between episodes and that's the problem that's the sad part i mean that's what we're facing right now with another series that i was talking about earlier one of my favorite games of all time rpgs that i grew up loving was final fantasy 7 and square enix is planning on doing the episodic thing you're gonna have a part of a game which is an they call it an episode, and then you're going to have to wait another couple of months, maybe a year, because let's face it, Square Enix is slow when it comes to these things because they take their time to develop stuff <laughs> for the next episode, and they said there's going to be at least four or five episodes, maybe six, to complete the entire story. 
of I think they've, Cloud versus Sephiroth. They've clarified that a little bit since then. It's not going to be episodes of the story of the what they what they were trying to say is each segment is going to be completed by a completely different team doing a completely different gameplay style and they're going to be completely separate games. Okay. So they finally clarified that I didn't see that, but it had me scared that they were doing that because I don't want to have a to-be-continued at the end of a game and be like, oh, but having so to the wait. The problem is, me. with the Fan Fantasy Seven, it was exactly the same with Shenmue 3. Sony mm-hmm. were like, oh, we need to get a really good E3, but we've got no games to show. So we'll just announce this game. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're like, we haven't got nothing. It's going to take at least three years just to build something basic up. It's that's why Shenmue the announced it, and then it, it was basically I think it said two years on the Kickstarter campaign, but that two years is yep. now gone, and it's going to be delayed till next year now. Yep, and I'm a huge Shenmue fan as well, and seeing that news. Uh, in a way, it kind of disheartens me, but then in a way, it doesn't because you know I want game developers to take more time with their games. I want them to not rush with games like World of Warcraft. That's one of my favorite games, but the expansion packs every time they come out with an expansion pack, there's always glitches. And one of my favorite series for sports games is coming out in about a week, which is WWE 2K19, and they've had a habit of forcing games out because of the licensing. So when you license a product, you know, there are people who own the rights to the product force it out. And it's like, no, we need our game developers and if the ga- any game developers out there that are major game developers or indie developers, learn from this. You need to take your time from a game. If you have a demo of a game that's ready to be played, then you can announce your game. Don't just announce the game. Get us hyped up. Yes, Star Wars. Um, get us hyped up for a game that's not going to come out or end up getting canceled. Make sure you have a demo for us to play to get the hype train rolling to show the actual big publishers that there's enough following for a game. So, yeah, I can kind of see why Telltale fell. And it's sad because also with allegations of hearing about sexual harassment and other things, forms of abuse going on within that company and then several other companies. It's like those are the things that I want our future game developers to avoid. I want them to take their time with games. But please, for the love of God, don't push your workers beyond exhaustion. I'm talking to you... I'm talking to you, Project Red. CD Project Red, you got accused of not only overworking their workers, but more sexual harassment allegations within that company as well. It's, you know, there has to be a fine line between developing a good game and developing a game for profit. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Season passes, DLC that's already on the disc that they're charging us for. We don't need this. I miss the PS2 eras, where they actually took their time with games. Yes, okay, PS2 couldn't be updated. They couldn't patch the games. But at least they didn't try to force, you know, force feed us DLC and force feed us episodes and episodes and episodes Do you understand of stuff. why the DLC is needed? DLC is not needed. Ooh. It's not how needed. Much, That's my opinion. How much do you and think I'm a game so- is supposed to cost? I am sure that there are several other games out there who would say the same thing, especially several game developers, because I know several of them who work as independent developers. Yeah, what well, I'm saying. Games nowadays are what? 60 pounds? 60, 70? For like That's only because company. of a certain company. I talked about this last week. A certain yeah. company pushed the limit on trying to charge higher prices for the game because no, they knew they yeah. could get away with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I understand a Switch game. Probably. I understand Nintendo... Okay, I understand that Nintendo... I'm not trying to get into a debate here. I'm just saying that I understand that Nintendo can charge $60 for a cartridge because it costs a lot of money to make a cartridge, whereas a Blu-ray doesn't cost as much money. Okay. They've already admitted that. Sony's admitted that, and several other developers have admitted that. That's why a lot of developers won't go to Switch, because 
it cost them more money to develop a game on Switch compared to developing a game on a Blu-ray because PS3 days were Blu-ray discs. But how about PS4 then, were Blu-rays. I'm not getting into a debate either, but how come the exact same game was on Android for 19.99? And then the exact same game gets ported over because it's an Android-based system onto the Switch, and all of a sudden it's twenty nine ninety nine. Because of Nintendo licensing fees, we talked about that last week. Nintendo charges an extra ten dollars per game to be on their system. That's why Nintendo hardly has any sales. That's why most of these independent developers, yeah, Switch has become an independent developed system. I like that, but a lot of these independent developers don't want to charge high-end prices for their games, so they're lucky to grab sales and stuff, but Nintendo still charges them a small licensing fee based on what they feel the quality of the game and how much sales they think they're going to get out of the game. And I don't blame Nintendo for doing that because, hey, Nintendo, I, if I was Nintendo and I owned my own system, cool, you know, make a little few extra dollars on the side, but don't do it at the expense of the gamers. And Sony and... Xbox, they were the first ones to do it, and then they started doing it, and it was all because of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare series. Modern Warfare 2 was the first game that pushed the $60 price limit, and it pushed, and once they knew they could get that money, because gamers will pay any dollar to buy their favorite game series, I they'll find think, a I way... I don't think I've ever bought a Call of Duty game in my life. I used to be a Call of Duty fan. I, I wasn't a Modern Warfare fan. The campaign was great, but I got it when it was on sale, like, years later. Like, people nah, still play that game. Nah, I'm still shocking. Nah. 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 Uh, okay. Like. Is there any other news? Uh, mm. Um, News well. in the Sega front. I saw that Sega has finally started launching classic game series on Steam. Starting with Sonic yeah, the Hedgehog and there's a... Oh, Neo they've Geo had Classic. The, they've there. had the Mega Drive collection on Steam for years. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's pointless. Them releasing those old games makes no sense. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like the, the, This is the thing. That's, they, they've started releasing it with a new branding and logo. It makes it look new. But my uh, friend Joe and I were talking about it. They, uh, If you remember the PS3 days, there was a game... They came out uh, Sega Genesis Collection. Yeah, I've got that it. That was fine. But now they have the new Sega Genesis, Sega Ultimate Collection or something like that for PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. And they've added games that weren't on that, and but it's, then it's mostly it's the same a, game. It's got a VR mod in as well. Oh, I didn't know that either. That sounds interesting. Yeah, you can sit. There's a VR mode you can that sit. they added on the You game. can sit like on the floor and you can look around the room and look at the TV while you're playing the game. That is cool. So you can basically take Sonic the Hedgehog and transform it and look around the entire room of your house and have a Sonic track going all the way around. It's pretty fun. That sounds cool. Yeah. That sounds cool. But that, that, okay. that's that. And then there's a, another system coming out. Uh, Mega Graph or something like that. Mega... Mega... Uh, the, something. The thing where you can actually swap the modules and play different things. Yep, you can play all old school classic games, but the price, man, the price! $1,000! <laughs> Unless you want a higher module, then it goes up, but it's $1,000 just for the baseline costs for the collector's value of it or whatever. Just and they said the warranty's the for 10 Saturn. years. <laughs> but I don't see why I want it for the Sega Saturn, because I've got two Sega Saturns, so... I just want to play a Sega Dreamcast. That's all I want to play. That's the one that I, I want to touch. I think the Sega Dreamcast was massively overrated. It came out, it didn't sell very well, everyone hated it. And then all of a sudden everyone was like, oh, the Dreamcast was amazing. Like, no, it wasn't, it was shit. Well, there's only one game, I don't know if it was... It was, it was on Sega Saturn, I believe. It was uh, Panzer Dragoon. Panzer Dragoon. Then there's pa Panzer Dragoon um, Zoa. Then there was Panzer Dragoon Saga. Then there was Panzer Dragoon... Archer for the Xbox, original Xbox. Ah, more news. Uh, just came in my inbox. We also have uh, 
two new games, Xbox One adding two backwards compatible games, Call of Juarez, Bound in Blood, and The Cartel are now playable on Xbox One. Woohoo. Two rubbish games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, bit and then, news, uh, one bit of news I'm uh, happy about. The Nintendo Switch is getting the arcade part of Virtual Racing. One of my really? favourite games. Yeah, one of my favourite games. Wait, but why? Shut up, Eddie. I don't care about you. But why? It's one of my favourite games. But why? Of all the... Mm. Because I, d- I don't okay. want to bring out my PlayStation 2 and play the... I think it was okay, the Sega... Is it, on, is, is it on PlayStation now? It's on... Ooh. I don't know. It's on the Sega... Not the Mega Drive collection. It was like the Sega Arcade Classics or something stupid. Or the Sega because Ages collection. Because I know Virtual Races, that was a game that was on PlayStation. No, no. Why would it be released on Switch? It was It was originally on the Sega Saturn. Right. And it came out on the Mega Drive with the Sega Virtual Processor chip. So it was like a cartridge that was 90 quid. So it would have been like $120 um, just for the game on the Mega Drive. Or the Genesis, as you guys call it. It was amazing. It was the first 3D game... It actually came out on the 16-bit sort of generation sort of stuff, and it was amazing. Sega's AM2 at their best, and then Sega decided that that was too expensive to charge that much per each game. So they took the processor out of the cartridges and built it into a big mushroom-shaped thing, and that's what the Sega 32X was. So the cartridges huh. were just the Mega Drive games, and all the horsepower was in that little mushroom. So you bought the the one thirty two X, and then all the games could just be the same price as Mega Drive games. Mm. But yeah, it just didn't work very well. Because Sega America wanted to keep the the actual Mega Drive and that going with the thirty two X and the Mega CD. Sega Japan didn't want to keep that going. They wanted to switch straight to the thirty two um, Sega Saturn. And then they had a big civil war, and that's what destroyed the company. Yeah, I looked up uh, just now. I looked up that game, and apparently there's a huge following for it yes. Um, yes. around the world. So yes. that's why they ported it to Switch. And Switch Nintendo's teaming up with Sega once again to try to get as many Sega classics remastered and brought back to the Switch. Because you know, as we talked about with the Switch earlier, it's like the Switch is becoming one of those consoles where independent games are on there, and so it's becoming. It's, they're trying to make the Switch the new arcade system, so to speak. It's like they get all these arcade classic and everything coming back, which is great because nostalgia. I love nostalgia. Yeah, but that's Nintendo's entire business plan. Nostalgia. Their entire thing is just nostalgia. There isn't really anything else to it. Come on, Eddie. Let's not go into this. I've already made a developer cry once in an interview. We're not going in. Oh, further. you know it's true, man. <laughs> All they do, all they do, is do the same shit every year. Like yeah, they I say, we're going to release a few new games, and then every new game they release is just a license they already own. What's the newest thing they've released? Wasn't Their it, most popular it, game for the Switch. Technically, I disagree because there was oh, no, one no, game Splatoon. that just came out for Splatoon. the Switch that I loved. Yeah, Splatoon. that was pretty cool. Huh? No, that was Splatoon one. Was horrible. Yeah, I'm uh, I love the good. graphics the and the music, time? but the gameplay was horrendous. So I thought it was fun, but it's not for everybody. What, game did what was the newest? What was the newest IP they have? Splatoon. Yeah, that's what nah, I'm there's an there's another one. It was a uh, trying to remember what the hell it was, but I played it. Uh, shoot, can't think of it right now. But it was something that I played, and it's on my Switch. If you can't remember the game, and there aren't that many games on the Switch, let's be honest, there aren't that many new IP games on the Switch. There are basically none. So. Nintendo has maybe two new IPs in a span of what? Half a decade? A decade? And they've done what with it? Nothing. Their entire business model is just they're going to release the same old shit just constantly. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with nostalgia. 
There is nothing wrong with nostalgia because... No, there is nothing wrong with nostalgia. And I have a friend here in this house who would disagree with you. And he would also disagree with you on several things, but I'm not getting into a debate about that. The whole point is nostalgia... No, actually, wrong. Nostalgia is way better than most of the modern-day crap that comes out nowadays. I hate to say that, but most of the modern-day crap that comes out nowadays is paywall. Money, 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 money. Make money. Just going to forget GoldenEye, right? Le- that's considered forget- nostalgia. Okay. That's a nostalgia game because it came out on the 64. And it looked like and trash. It, it wasn't and made by Nintendo horrible. either. Yes, but it was remastered and it looked better. But that was still considered yeah. nostalgia. And it looked, it's still considered nostalgia. And it still played like trash. <laughs> like, well, I'm glad that you're a modern day gamer. I'm a retro gamer. I love retro inspired yeah, games. Like, it many, takes me back to my childhood. How many games were good? And how many Plenty of them. Many? I have an entire library of games, but I'm uh-huh. not going to sit here. It would take too long to name every single old school game that I have that is nostalgic, that is I'll amazing. I'll that one. But I'll say this. There are uh, maybe a few n- retro games that you could still play now and say they hold up. A few. Okay, let's see. Uh, I can name one series right now. I can name one series right now besides GoldenEye. Doom. No, Doom. The, the new Doom was horrible. Yeah, the no. old school series was amazing. Yeah, the old ones are still good. The new the old ones school are. series is right. Yeah, sure. Boom. Doom. Doom. And maybe Wolf Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon. Pokemon, oh, Stadium. Pokemon. Pokemon no, Stadium. Pokemon Red. Pokemon Blue. Pokemon, Pokemon Yellow. No, no. Trash. No, no. Pokemon is like, not trash. Don't swear at us. Like, don't swear at us. There were three good Pokemon games. And then Ooh. after that... Arms. Arms is a new one. Ah, arms, yes, yes. But that was a travesty of a game as well. <laughs> <laughs> see what I'm, do you see what I'm saying right now? Okay, this let's see. Um, okay, Mega Man. You can't knock Mega Man. Oh, come on. I can. No, stop, that was stop, 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 stop. I'm going to keep, going. I, can keep going. I can keep going. I can keep going like I told tra- you for... I don't care what anyone says. No, Mega you know what? You're trash for not liking Mega Man because yeah, honestly, Mega Man. Man, if you can't beat Mega Man, then you're not a gamer. I can beat I'm sadly. <laughs> trash. The entire Mega game Man is. was not trash. Mega Man is fun. So it gives me a quick get. Exactly. That's boring. Mega oh. Man as a game is boring. Hey guys. It's just uh, ha! Ha! Yeah. Coming from a Mega Man expert in my house, if you boring. can't. Mega Man is pretty much rock, paper, scissors. That's what it is. And that's the most boring game in the world. When was the last time you played rock, paper, scissors? Nobody played rock, no one has played but rock, Mega paper, Man scissors. is still fun. Years. Street Fighter is still fun. Tekken okay, is still Street, fun. Those Street are retro Fighter, games. Like, don't Fighter. I can guys, keep going. guys, before we get into Tekken a massive broken. debate, I just want to... I'm not s- getting into a debate. <laughs> I just want to say... I'm saying my, how I feel. Retro the, games are amazing. The reason no, why... Not. I'm not a big Mega Man <clears throat> fan. It's because, like, a lot of places in the UK, Nintendo did not take off. In the UK, Sega Mass System sold 12 million units. The Nintendo machine only sold about 2.5 million. Yeah. So, in the UK, it was all Sega's arcade games and Sega games and sports games. And PlayStations. We, we didn't, well, I'm not getting that far ahead. But <laughs> it wasn't until maybe the Nintendo 64 before Nintendo became a name in the UK. That's true. I think it was... I think it was so, after for a lot of those old-style games that everyone goes on about on the internet because every single podcast and website is all American-based, everyone goes on about the NES and the Super Nintendo and but for us in the UK, it's like well, uh, I know of them, but we never really knew. It was like your rich friend at the corner who might have had one. But same as the so Neo Geo have... that never officially got released in the UK, we had to import it for about six hundred quid, so about eight hundred dollars. So here's a oh. question then. Here's a question. Yeah. It's uh to end all the discussion since we're way over time. Um. I can tell, looking at the clock. Um, <laughs> in the UK, what was the best system of all time that you guys got over there? Because it's like you said, you just mentioned most of the NES and Super Nintendo stuff was over in America, while you guys over there didn't really have access to that 
as much as you wanted. So what was the best system that you guys oh, no, we got had a- access we had, to? We had access to the NES and the SNES. It just didn't sell because it was shit. Yeah, like, you have to remember, Nintendo's, Nintendo's entire thing, that most of their consoles were just terrible until maybe 3D came along and then they got a little better. But other than that, the only things you'd play were maybe Zelda and Super Mario. And so, Zelda was boring as shit. For and me, Super Mario was... For me, one. growing up... We had like the Spectrum and the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. I had all those, and the home consoles weren't really thought of. It was all home computer based stuff. And it wasn't until the mid 90s when maybe when Sega Mega Drive sort of started coming big. Because that sold big in the UK, did the Mega Drive. And it wasn't until the PlayStation actually came out where. They actually, in the UK, they really targeted, um, like, nightclubs or what, I don't know if you guys call them nightclubs or, like, rave sort of clubs. They'd have them sat in the in the back, set up PlayStations with, like, uh, Wipeout and Tekken and things yeah. like that. And it was only when that sort of happened and Sony came in with their money, um, that was when home consoles took off, was with the original PlayStation. Like, Nintendo wasn't really a thing for most people. Like, unless you really actually wanted it, you didn't play it. Hmm. Well. Have, but right now, but, in the UK, depending on what generation you are, like, if you're from, if you're as old as David is, then you're thinking back <laughs> Commodore days. Like, you're thinking back when things used to light up on the board. But for me, it was the PlayStation. Like, easily. Everyone was playing PlayStation. If you were playing a Nintendo console, you were playing by yourself. Because, let's be honest, the 64 was nice, but the controller... But I think it was that or the GameCube. One of the controllers was like a goddamn travesty. I think both of them were... No, even the 64 was quite not great. God, Nintendo is just... Awful, but, but yeah. I mean, like for me, I was a massive Mega Drive fan, so I went straight out and got the Sega Saturn. So I'm um, uh, for me, my uh, favorite console of all time is the Sega Saturn. Whatever you do, do not buy the retro system. There's a retro system that's on the market now. Sega, they're doing a Sega Saturn one coming out. They have a Sega Genesis one, and it's made by a company called At, At Games, Games and. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I've heard so many bad things. It's like some people are saying it's a complete trash system. It burns out too easily. Too the batteries die too quickly because they're controllers. Believe it or not, they plug into the system, but you also have to have batteries in the controllers to use it, which does not make a bit of sense to me. That's, How much is this? already system? got me. They're about eighty quid, sixty quid, eighty yeah. quid, something like that. Oh. But they've got it's eight, on sale in the games, US now. Eighty games built into it. But no, it's supposed to be HD. Look. It's HD. You can plug it into the system. Yeah. Just looking at the price, you know that's not going to work. <sighs> oh, it already worked. Several people actually spent their games hard-earned money bucks. just to buy it, and they bought it, and then they found out how complete trash it was. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're paying that little for that much. You obviously know that thing, something's wrong with it. Like, uh, the PlayStation Mini. It's £90, but you get 20 games with it. The worst, like, I don't see that breaking anytime soon. I, I'd be surprised if it comes out and it's complete trash. Technically, technically, if you want to get technical on the PlayStation Classic that's coming out, it's already sold out. Pre-orders are already sold out everywhere. Like, I've, except I've, the shit, GameStop. I've got one. I've got a pre-order. Who, who wouldn't, though? Again, the, one of the best consoles of, its genera- of any generation, the PlayStation 1. Like, there aren't many consoles that can go... I've already got a, a PlayStation... And all those games that are already probably coming out on it, I've already got all that stuff. That's the thing, I'm kind of skeptical though, because they haven't announced all the games. They've announced most of the games, and I already own most of the games. So it's like, I already have a PS1 and a PS2. A PS2 plays PS1 games, I have my PS2 hooked up. So, so just uh, before we end, because we might as well end it now, because we've been talking quite a while. Um, Eddie, yeah. name five games that has to be on the PS1 Classic. Oh, that's easy as hell. First Tekken has to be if it's well, not. No, 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 then... not the ones that have already been announced because Tekken Three's already Tekken been 3's announced. Tekken Three's on there. Oh, and Tekken, Tekken 2's, 2's on there too. Yeah. Even though I'd have thought Tekken Two would have been a better game, but anyway, it's not. That's 
What else do you need? What else do you need? What else do you want? What, no, just, games do you what, need? what would you say the five games should be on there? I don't know. I think because for me, the biggest thing with PlayStation was that it was kind of one of the first homes for ge- for fighting games other than Street Fighter. Because you had Virtual Fighter on there. I no, you right. didn't. Nope. Yeah, you did. Yeah, no. Virtual Fighter's on there. No, Virtual Fighter's not on there. It's on the Sega Saturn. It didn't come out until the PlayStation 2 with Virtual Fighter 4. One of the Virtual Fighters Evolution. is on there, though, they said. No, That's what it no said, yeah, uh, Virtual Fighter's on the news. There. I was looking at the news yeah. on GameStop.com. It says Virtual Fighter. Nope. I remember. Hold on, I'm going to look. I want to see. Now I'm going to find out. Hold on. Uh, now, now I'm curious. What? On I'll the... tell you exactly what games they've announced so far for this. On the, on the, on the mini, system. they've announced the... Um, the... Oh god, the Western yeah. role playing game. Wild Arms. Um, yep, I saw that. Ridge Racer Type 4, Tekken 3, Jumping Flash, mm-hmm. and uh, Final Fantasy 7. That's all they've announced. Five games. Okay. Well, they uh, have to have Crash uh, that Bandicoot. Ar- that one article was on- wrong, and I don't think they're going to have Crash Bandicoot or Spyro, believe it or not, because they, just, they sure. just came out with the remasters of those. Yeah, true, but they should have Castlevania, Castlevania Symphony, Symphony of the Night, I think it was called. Wow, was that it? was originally Cost- a Sega Saturn game. True, but yeah. it was on the PlayStation. It was uh, on PlayStation One. Came out like I think a year after it was on. Uh, I think the- I think there was yeah, one Castlevania game that came out for PS One, but it only came out in Japan. Um, ah. But they should have that on there. Uh, the Dracula right. X Chronicles. Yeah, uh, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Trigger, instant Chrono Trigger, because. Like whether people like it or not, it's one of the best RPGs ever made. So there you go. Um, Resident Evil. I think it was Resident Evil they can't, 3. They and can't have Resident yeah. Evil. Oh, no. bugger off. Why not? Because they, they already did that. No, they, they can't do that because they can't sell it with an age rating. It'll cut the sales figures down. And yeah, if, you have an 18, uh... if you have an 18 rated game, they'd have to sell it to only to. Paris. Have they announced Gran Turismo? No. Uh, I'd, nope. I'd say Gran Turismo 2 should be on there. If it's not on there, I'm going to be surprised. Yeah. I think Gran Turismo 2 is the best-selling, the game. best-selling game ever on a PlayStation platform. Yeah, absolutely. Like, every time a Gran Turismo is announced, its pre-orders are just gone first day. Any and other then, games? Oh, Dino Crisis. They can't have that because that's an 18. Oh, technically, come on, man. technically they could though. See, I'm I'm looking at the box and it says rating pending. They could still have yeah, but the rating say why? Why would you have a classic that you want to sell? Because it was amazing. As a plug and play device. That's because it was limiting amazing. All the children from buying that device. Do you not remember Dino Crisis? Yeah, it wasn't very good. See. See, oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing, David. This is the thing. If there you're you. thinking from a business perspective, I, I agree with Eddie. If you're thinking from a business perspective, look at the modern games that are out and look at how many parents let their kids play it. You see how many little kids in GTA Online lobbies, their parents mm-hmm. let them play it. So parents, some parents will be skeptical. Some parents will debate. Some well, parents will just not care because they want to play it for themselves. And then they'll the let the kids is, play. If you look at the backlash that some of the news would do, if... Sony announced all these 18 games on this kid's device. They'd be saying you're marketing these games at kids. True, but if they remaster the games, if the games come out on the, on the system, but as remasters, then technically they would have to get rated again. And if the rating was lower than 18, after yeah, it was they, rated they're again... Not, they're not then... getting remastered, they're just the PlayStation 1 games. Eh, we'll they're, just dumping, they're just getting, they're just they're just getting HDMI updates, that's it. It's an oh, HDMI true. cable, so it's just getting an HDMI upgrade. It so it's pretty much going to be like the NES Classic and yeah. the Super Nintendo Classic. It's just the original ROMs dumped through with the HDMI cable through. Well, then that means they won't be able to put either Mortal Kombat or I don't think they're going to be able to put uh, Legacy of Kane either. No. Probably not. And that's going to be a problem. But will it be... It will be... Um, you'll be able to connect it to the internet, isn't it? Nope. They haven't, they haven't announced that yet. There was, rumors, it's gonna be... there was rumors that it's got Bluetooth in so you can connect your PlayStation 4 controllers to it for the dual analog sticks. I think that they are going to have to allow you to connect to the internet, wow. mostly because if they want, because they're going to want to sell 
these older games that are 18 rated. They're going to want to because people will buy them like gangbusters. Yeah, for no but they'll do the, the exact same as what Nintendo's done, Eddie. They'll sure. have See, the PS1. I don't think they're marketing the, to kids, though. Because it PS... says in the marketing that it's the perfect console for retro-loving fans. So they're marketing to the fans of the retro series, which are the adults that grew up with it. So there's still a chance they could do it. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it doesn't seem like they're waiting for like a, a ten-year-old to go in there and buy. We it. did have yeah. some classic collections that launched a while ago. I don't know if they were digital or if they were physical, but they had multiple ratings across the board. Like it had an E for every one box, and then it had a little dash in the middle, and then it said to M because they had some M-rated games mixed in there. So they might do the same. Similar thing to warn parents that yes, there's some M-rated games on here. This is not meant for you know kids, but who knows? Because it's it's going to be very interesting to see what they actually do then. The problem because... is I know for a fact because I've worked with like lic- licenses and doing lots, when I was trying to get voice actors in, you have to try and get everything signed up months and months and months before anything goes these are actually coming out in a couple of months time they'll need to be finalized like in a month or so for them to be like sent out for manufacturing so december 3rd it comes out i think they know exactly what's on this machine they already know what's on it but they just wanted to announce the first five and then just get the hype going then they'll announce the others at a later date they could be really evil and not announce anything until last second, you know, because they already got their pre-orders. Because it says, I just I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it now, and it says that they that they will have, they're gonna have uh, Ridge Racers, they're gonna have like Wild Arms and Tekken Three. Yep. But there are going to be 15 games that they haven't yes. actually yeah, there's announced 20 yet. 20 games in total, already. No, I'm saying there's 15 games they haven't announced yet, yeah. but no one knows if they're going to be, or what they're going to be. Well, so I do, but... Oh, I just saw on the yeah. news, um, I was looking at the news, Daily Express in the UK covered it. PlayStation Mini Games list update, Sony delivers bad news to PS1 fans. PlayStation announced last week, <laughs> speaking to IGN, a Sony spokesperson said that the console would not be supported post-release. There are no plans to bring new content to PlayStation Classic post-launch. What you see is what you get, and the games that we have on there, we already know. They have ruled out any kind of online functionality, which means trophies won't be supported or online play will not be supported. Um, they said Final Fantasy IX is a possibility. Crash Bandicoot and Tomb Raider are also possibilities. Abe's Odyssey is a possibility, Wipeout, and Castlevania Symphony Night, but they said they're not giving any solid answers. That's just what they said. Um, they wanted to give us a little the needs kind to of... Be Destruction Derby 2, there needs to be Wipeout 2097, or to you guys in the US, Wipeout XL. Um, they yeah. changed its name. Uh, there needs to be like the Tekken game, the Ridge Racer game. I don't know, I think that if they're not going to support it after launch, then I do not advise people to buy it. But the thing is, Eddie, the thing is, I think it makes a lot more sense for them not to support it like the, the, like the Nintendo machines. Because then, in a year's time, they can release the, the PS1 version in a mini form with 20 more games on it. Then the year after, they can release a different version with 20 games. And then they can do it like a 30th anniversary oh. with like 100 games or something. I like that idea. You just made a brilliant business idea. If Nintendo copied this, that would be epic. I mean, think about this, though. I wonder. And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I support this. I'm not saying I'm for it or against it. So if people do this, cool. But you see it on eBay all the time. Um. Wondering for people who mod systems out there, is this system going to be one of those that could be modded and cracked into? Because Nintendo NES Classic was cracked into, Nintendo went into a complete rage storm about, and Super Nintendo Classic got hacked and can play Game Boy Advance games. So can the PS1 <laughs> game system actually be hacked into and but it, it is add funny. more bombs onto? I wonder. Uh, the, the Super Nintendo <laughs> Mini... It was funny that some games, when you put the ROMs on, wasn't powerful enough to run the games. Oh, yeah. 
they're not gonna they're not going to put more power than they need because that's gonna just cost them more money. Because now over here in the U.S., you got Walmart selling little classic arcade machines that have PS1 classics redesigned and even NES classics redesigned, like Rampage, Pac-Man. They had a I saw a Mortal Kombat one that was on the market, but I haven't seen it since a couple of years back that had the PS1 Mortal Kombat on there. So it's like, you know, they had those little handheld systems that emulate the software, so it makes me wonder. But they said that the memory cards are going to be internal, kind of like the PS3 did with the PS1 games. We could save to an internal memory card. Well, that's a bit useless in the way. But like, I, I will say, I've pre-ordered one, and... I don't care what's on it because I believe, no matter what they're saying, I think it'll just be basically like a Raspberry Pi inside, and you'll just be able to rip yeah. the memory card out, dump another memory card in with like a thousand games on, and shove it in. You should be able to. Yeah. You should. If you can't, then I'll be very surprised. So, will I. and I think these people aren't stupid. They know that's what people want to do to it, so. They, a lot well, of the times, the, they, they make it quite easy to get into and do stuff. So, well, let's hope. Isn't it? Let's hope. Yeah, I think that'll do for talk. I mean, did you hear about the like the Sega Mini, the Mega Drive Mini, and the Genesis Mini? It was meant to come out end of this year, but now Sega have pulled the license from App Games from making it. And they're going to hand it to another developer, manufacturer, to make a, yeah, a, for- it again. And it'll be out next year now. I forgot to mention that earlier. I saw that and I was happy because they made a... At Games got in trouble by Sega as well for making a Game Gear classic. But the Game Gear classic... <laughs> believe it or not, the Game Gear classic didn't have just Game Gear games on there. It had some actual Genesis games on there that weren't on the Game Gear. And Sega's like, wait, wait. What, what did you do that for? <laughs> oh, well, it's already on the market, so we can't pull it and re-release it. It's Wait, it's out the, there. <laughs> the Sega Mega Drive at games, one that was released last year or the year before, that had, I think it said 80 games, but only 45 are Mega Drive games, and the rest are either Game Gear games or games that weren't officially released. Yeah. I saw that at the box because the local Walgreens had one sitting on the shelf and I looked at it and I'm like I just started laughing. I'm like, wait a second. I know for a fact this was this was a game that was released in Japanese but not in America. I'm like should I buy it just for this because of that? And then I read the reviews and it's like, nope. <laughs> oh well. And then so, they also said some of the games weren't working properly, so. <laughs> uh, it's basically... Yeah. If you're one of these really anal people who connect two things up to a PC and have it all monitored side by side, you can see a difference. But I think a lot of people, you haven't played these games in 20, 30 years, so you're not even going to notice. Not really. It's like how um, people were complaining about how before Spider-Man came out, they were worried that Spider-Man was being downgraded for the PlayStation. It has. Because of the... Because they can see puddle reflections or some shit? It was downgraded, but there's less puddles. Yay, that was downgraded. Okay, cool. Less puddles. Yeah, less puddles, though. The fuck? I'm not... This isn't Puddle Simulator, goddammit. That's what the subtitle was. It was Spider-Man, the Puddle Simulator. I thought it was Spider-Man meets... Spider-Man versus Puddle-Man. It's just one of those things... Spider-Man can't get out of the bath. What do these people so, play these games for? Is what I want to know. See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I said earlier. These people just they complain about small, little, tiny, little details and minuscule details that don't really matter. That's why I said, you know, back in the retro days, graphics weren't the great, but gameplay was still good. It was still fun. I still sat down and enjoyed it. That's why I said, you know, people just need to stop complaining so much unless, about games. And unless enjoy you're the Nintendo games. console, and that was just broken. Oh yeah, that was just awful. You couldn't even hold the damn controller. <laughs> you need some huge ass hands to press <laughs> buttons and use the like goddamn analog stick that was in the middle of the fucking controller for some reason. 
Wow, we, we, were in, we were in completely over time today. <laughs> so, episode 229, 1UP Gaming. Thank you. Um, please visit our website at oneupgaming.co.uk. We have our official Patreon site, which is patreon.com slash O-U-G. We have official t-shirts and mugs over at bluecyborg.com. We have an album out on the Play Store or Spotify. Just search Games Inspired Music. If you buy the the album, I think it's only five ninety nine, but 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. And we also have our first 100 podcasts available at audiobooksontape.com. And everything sold, we'll give £1 to Diabetes UK. Uh, we have Amazon links on the website, so please, if you're buying anything from Amazon, click on the link. It just basically takes you straight to Amazon, buy what you're buying, and we get a little 20% of every sale or something stupid, I can't remember now. Um, we've got Facebook, YouTube, just search 1UP Gaming. We have an official Twitch sort of channel, so it's just twitch.tv slash O-U-G official. If you want to tweet us, it's at O-U-G official. Oh yeah, funny story. I put a tweet out two or three days ago just saying that I was having some toast um, from the... Oh god, what the hell is a game? Guild Wars 2. I have a toaster that prints the Guild Wars 2 logo on the toast. So I took a picture of it and I put it up on Twitter. And within a day, I had like 39,000 retweets. Like crazy. Why do you have a toaster that prints the Guild Wars 2 logo on toast? We got it sent for a prize. <laughs> what the fuck? That's interesting. Yeah, I love Guild Wars 2. It's one of my favourite games. I gave, yeah, one, well, I gave well, one away for someone winning the Mario Kart 64 tournament. And I kept the other oh. one because I needed a, a toast. <laughs> <laughs> You're ridiculous, man. <laughs> You're just ridiculous. And if you want to email us, just email us at contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. If you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe to us and leave five stars and feedback. Um, I think that's basically it. So thank you, Eddie. Yes. <laughs> and thank you, Brian. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting a kick out of looking at this tweet right now. I'm looking at it right now on my Twitter, and I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, just don't, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys, and we'll be back next week, so thank you, goodbye. Awesome. Hey guys, Justin here. I just wanted to say that I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you a lot. Yes, you in particular, in that way. And I wanted to say, I think you're great. I've always said that about you. And I was wondering, if you think we're great, if you could give us a quick rating on iTunes, we'd really appreciate it. It would really, really help us out in that, you know, podcasty sort of way. And if you're feeling particularly festive, perhaps even a little saucy, maybe stop by our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash O-U-G and see if you can't slip a few bucks our way. After all, every little penny or whatever space money they use in Europe helps out the show thanks for listening OUG gaming will always be free but with your support we can always move forward and always be better